And now for our weekly news segment. Okay, so let's do it. So, um, do you want yeah, me to read one and then um, talk about it, or how do you? Yeah, want try to, to, try to give, give a quick little summary, and then we'll see if we, we have any comments. We have we have like ten minutes, so. Uh... Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna read off the Coin Telegraph stuff because it's most, mostly C- CBDCs, and then if you have anything to say, okay, and then we move on to Twitter. Well, stuff that's Tom Emmer on. Why don't you just play the video? I sent the link of uh, that, that's yes. more entertaining. Play his. Okay, so we're gonna play this one first. Yeah. Is the audio working? Chairman Hill, I want to thank you. Yes. Right. It's working. Okay, so uh, before I play it, so basically Tom Emmer. Um, he talked about a government tool for financial surveillance. Surveillance is un-American, un-American. We must urgently develop a f- digital financial system that is one, open and freely accessible to all, of course. Two, without requiring permission from the government or anyone else, of course. And three, private safeguarding the users, the user's identity. So now let's play the video. Chairman Hill, I want to thank you. Uh, this is an important hearing that you're holding today, and I appreciate it. Open, permissionless, and private. What do I mean by this? In our digital economy, all transactions are intermediated by banks, governments, or big tech. We must develop digital tools that function like cash. These digital assets must be open and freely accessible to all without requiring permission from the government or anyone else and private safeguarding the user's identity. These qualities are fundamental to the to a free society and unfortunately the administrative state would rather have a cashless economy run on a central bank digital currency a tool that communists have than to work to maintain our american values in the digital age the need to protect americans right to financial privacy is an all-time high that's why i introduced the cbdc anti-surveillance state act with over 50 of my colleagues this bill prevents unelected bureaucrats from creating a tool for financial surveillance if not open permissionless and private like cash a cbdc is nothing more than a ccp style surveillance tool that will oppress the american way of life if we're not going to uh, allow that to happen and mr chair i'd ask uh, i'd like to submit for the record my december uh, 1st letter to uh, uh, to the uh, susan collins at the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston about their shady uh, CBDC uh, pilot they've been running. Without mm-hmm. objection, uh, and the gentleman's time. All right. Yeah, so he basically just pitched Monero, right? Um, yes, yeah, somebody should get on developing some kind of digital cash as soon as they possibly can. I yeah, <laughs> it's idea. a great <laughs> idea, Tom. Ever. I tried getting this guy on the show numerous times. When I, when I ran for Congress, after I ran, I thought I'd have... Uh, the ability to get him. I spoke to his office and everything, but I don't know. He dodged That's me. That's interesting. That was, I didn't even see that video yet. I I saw it, people sending it around. That's huh. Yeah, I, I will say I think it's interesting that he's dodged me so much with not wanting to come on the show. Um, <laughs> but I've seen I've seen him on uh, what's that chick's name? She's a big Zcasher. So he Naomi he's Brockwell? Naomi Brockwell. I've seen him on Naomi Brockwell's show talking about uh you know i think zcash came up so it's he's implying yeah. monero without directly saying it because he's not allowed to say monero <laughs> yes but what, i guess what i want to get out too is like the zcash community or z corp or you know they do a very good job at getting to these types of people hmm. um mm-hmm. Monero community needs needs to do a better job at that. I mean, also, I guess we, we don't really care. We're out here just doing our own thing, building the tech. No, because we don't want, you know, we're not we're not here trying to um, fit the legal system or, you know, whatever. No, we're not. But it also helps. Right. Like, that's why I ran for Congress in 2020, like for all the things he's saying. Right. Let's like like make Monero Monero America's um, America's crypto. It aligns with our, our ideals. But it's, it's just interesting to see that. He still is like not really talking about Monero, even though he's literally describing Monero. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's very important. I mean, people do a lot of amazing work, but in the confines of the walls. But then you do need to step up eventually, and the community needs to, so that people know of Monero, not just the small community. So we need to make sure that we reach to these people. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's not uh, not not saying bend the bend the knee in any way. No, no, but let's, no, yeah. let's, let's, let's have the public debate, especially if it's eventually going to come down to them trying to ban Monero. Right? We need to make mm-hmm. sure that uh, we properly express why it aligns with the 
ideals of a free and open society. Yeah. All right, next next story. Keep moving. Uh, one more thing. So he also mentioned that the administration has made it clear President Biden is willing to compromise the American people's right to financial privacy for a sort of surveillance style CBDC. Um, so I'm happy that we have someone in, um, in that can pitch to Congress anti-CBDC and it's not, not just everybody agreeing with CBDCs. I'm glad that we have an opposite force as well. But then we have Wyoming with the stable coins. So our state digital currency is even possible. Now, this one is interesting because what if we're not just going to have the us dollar but then every single state is going to have their own digital currency um in april a similar in initiative was proposed in texas as well where lawmakers introduced bills for creating a state-based digital currency backed by gold which is very interesting uh, but they said that wyoming needs to be able to trans to transact in a digital currency to accept payments to make payments and to do so without risk the wyoming stable co token is the solution uh, to that challenge. And then they also mentioned, um, I think, I'm not sure where exactly. Oh yeah, the era of multiple stable coins. So neither the US Federal Reserve nor any crypto focused reg legislators have re um, reacted publicly to the Wyoming project, but it is hard to imagine any kind of affirmative response given that the American dollar was established precisely to provide the countrywide monetary standard and bring the currency under the purview of the federal government. So. Uh, the, they're basically saying that we're not issuing a new currency. The Wyoming stablecoin is a digital rep representation of a U.S. dollar held in trust by the state of My Wyoming on behalf of the token holder. We are not competing with the Federal Reserve. We are enabling a technology. So uh, Wyoming and Texas are so far onto these types of, of uh, projects. Uh, then we have Israel, Hong Kong, uh, complete retail CBDC test emphasizing privacy, inclusivity. So. Hong Kong, Bank of Israel, and the Bank for International Settlements teamed up to address the com complex issues of our CBDCs. And um, they mentioned that, um, let me see where it was exactly, because there's uh, the Hong Kong, Israel, and one more country, I think, but they don't want to mention it for some reason. Uh, but in the, so the project the project is called Sela, and in the Sela ecosystem, the central bank that issues an RCBDC maintains a ledger for it with pseudo anonymous end user accounts and provides instantaneous settlement with real time gross settlement system. So pseudo anonymous is like in Bitcoin. Yes, it might be a, a large string, and you're not gonna know that oh this is Tuxedo or this is Dog. But guess what? That string will be attached to your passport, or your ID, or something. So then even if it's pseudo anonymous, they will still be able to know that it's you. So basically, you're not going to have <laughs> privacy. <laughs> They're emphasizing pseudo -anon anonymity, but it's not full on privacy that we want, essentially. And then we have SWIFT and rolls free central bank sensibility interoperability, beta test, expand sandbox. And here we have uh, Hong Kong again, the central bank of Kazakhstan and an unnamed central bank. So I'm really wondering which country this is as well. Um, so yeah, they've joined the beta phase of bank messaging platform SWIFT's central bank digital currency interoperability, interop, interoperability project. <laughs> uh, the company announced September um, 13th, so a lot of countries are, are onto it. Uh, SWIFT is a big uh, company. SWIFT messaging connects over 11,500 financial institutions worldwide, so it's big. And they will include a wholesale CBDC project in conjunction with the New York Federal Reserve Bank using a regulated liability network. So um, everybody is working on CBDCs. Now, a uh, quick mention on Monero Vegas. You can uh, check it out. So oh, this is uh, yeah. the website if you want to gamble with Monero. <laughs> you yeah, we, we, just, we just did that. We just did a whole thing on that. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, 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 you can see that. Um, and Vegas, and let's mention the hypocrisy of the Zcash leadership has reached new heights. On August 8th, 2022, the same day Tornado Cash was sanctioned, they released a blog post which said, um, this is a long post, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Obviously. Yeah, so this uh, was, I'll, I'll try to explain this a little bit. So the whole privacy pools thing uh, we talked about, I did a show on it last week or had somebody that came on and talked about it. privacy pools is uh it's it's a new proposal um similar to tornado cash it's for ethereum 
and basically the solution that they're they're trying to implement is that people can effectively mix their coins while also proving in a zero knowledge proof way that they haven't mixed their coins with any undesirable coins and so uh zuko came out and uh is, a, is opposed to this concept for all the reasons that many in the monero community are opposed it's kind of taking a guilty to proven innocent approach right uh as opposed to monero where we assume that we're all all innocent uh until proven guilty uh, with privacy pools it's that they're effectively uh move, moving everybody in a direction where we uh can have our privacy if we're willing to comply with the government uh, so is that is that really privacy at the end of the day? Is that default privacy? Or is that lead to a system where governments can essentially manipulate and censor based on who they're putting on these ban lists, right? So that's where the censorship comes in. So it sounds great in theory that you could have a system where your coins never mix with bad people's coins. But who's deciding who the baddies are, right? That's always been the problem. That's why we fear fear totalitarian governments because they're the ones that determine who's good and who's bad. And yeah, we may all think that some some group that's just out there murdering people is bad, but if it's some political group, some minority political group that may have some opinions that disagree with the political party in power, they may not necessarily be ethically bad. Uh, but the government may decide to ban them, right? It's what we saw with the Canadian trucker rally and why Monero actually really kind of really got on the radar as being this tool for censorship resistance. And here we are, we have Vitalik pushing the entire crypto ecosystem towards more of a compliance way of dealing with privacy and building compliance essentially into privacy tools and it's kind of ironic that zuko is out here now arguing against it when he is very much i wouldn't say pro compliance but he well and i guess i would say that i mean all his actions right uh the things the decisions that they've made in zcash have always been with taking into account what the the regulators are saying and what the governments are saying and making sure that you know everything is at the end of the day compliant it's why we see zcash on exchanges for example in new york city and we don't see monero listed on any um but yeah if you want to play i think there is a that it you could play a clip from this. I highly recommend people to actually check this this interview out. I would have loved, yeah. loved to get these two guys on myself. That would be amazing. But you could just play. Can maybe do that. I got to run. Are you good, Doug, to yeah, build the yeah. industry? I think we're good. Thank you, Tuck, so much. All right. for Thanks, making guys. Thanks for coming on, Tony. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Have a good weekend, man. Yeah. Cheers. Bye, Tuck. Anybody Bye, notice that the guy in the top right looks like a like Terry Davis? Yeah, 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 yeah. He does. Terry, uh, <laughs> I know who Terry Davis is. Who Terry Davis? Terry Davis. Um, All right, whatever. He's a genius, but, uh, um, yeah, you can. He's got to look alike, kind of. Yeah. Let's uh, let's play that clip from or play some of this video, maybe from like the fifty-three minute mark. I think was an interesting point. Oh, uh, I think. It was like 50, yeah, because then he talks to talk about Coinbase. But one thing, Zcash is actually on Coinbase. So the fact that Zcash, was, which is a privacy enabling crypto, is on Coinbase, which Coinbase is a heavily regulated exchange, I think that's a red flag. Right. And so he, he's, he's opposed to privacy pools. Although if you listen to his whole conversation, he kind of gets convinced by Vitalik. Uh, he's not, I think he walks away less opposed, but he's fundamentally according to him, philosophically opposed to this idea of, I think, building tools that lean towards, uh, you know, assuming that people are guilty until proven innocent, which is slightly ironic or hypocritical given his willingness to, to, to bend the knee with Zcash. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe he would disagree with that, and I don't want—I don't want to go at Zuko too hard. He's already got me blocked on Twitter, so I, yeah. I would like to one day maybe talk to him. <laughs> um, play, 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 play the clip. Let's play the video. Yeah. I'm very 
very set. Like it, it makes me feel good. <clears> what point is this? What mark is this? What was that? What play from? Uh, okay, fifty-three. All right, go ahead. Yeah, fifty-three. Yeah, because then he talks about uh, Coinbase and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Play that. If you want to draw lessons from Zcash, you can hate it or you can love it or whatever. But um, like like you mentioned, it's supported in all the regulated exchanges like Coinbase. <laughs> um, there's no detectable levels of evil terrorists using it. Um, even though it has far more users than Tornado Cash ever had, as far as I can tell. Right. And and I think this is really useful for teaching policymakers things, because I'm very wary of hypotheticals and vaporware as teaching people the wrong things, right? Um, and I think, I think it's very useful to be able to say to people, like, look, this, this... I think at this point he gets into, like, a whole nother conversation. Do you want me to keep going, or do you want me to... Let, let it go a little part? bit. Yeah, you can let it go a little bit. Yeah, okay. It exists. It has existed for a long time. It's got lots of users who are using it for all these totally normal purposes. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how I got onto that. Let's go. Let it go. Let it go. We spent, yeah. And we spent no, let it, a considerable oh, it? time and energy. No, let it let it keep going. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I didn't stop it. So around the world. That's why we had these issues where after the Koi Tech hack in 2018, Zcash was effectively banned, de facto banned. Japan, um, because yeah. it was an easy button in Japan. Yep. Yeah. So even though no Zcash was involved, no Zcash was stolen by the coin check hackers, right. and no Zcash was used by the coin check hackers in their uh, subsequent operations. But nonetheless, the response was, "Let's ban Zcash so that we can be seen to do something." Yeah, and it wasn't something Zcash must be it was done. Anything. This it was is something. You know. Yeah, it was anything that was privacy protecting, right? Yeah. And and I think they, they like in the case of exa uh, Japan, for example, the the regulators got a lot more intelligent about this stuff over the years and a lot smarter. We spent a lot of time, and I know others have spent a lot of time providing that education. And the narratives have even kind of shifted a little bit. So it's not even just privacy is a concern, but privacy plus self-custody or the ability to have self-custody. Because if I have self-custody and I can obfuscate kind of information, then I can evade capital controls and I may you know, be able to fund the money into different places. So the dynamics that have, have shifted. But I think you know, in those early years, and we got called in, we got called in there. We got called into the U.S. government and various departments. We got called in. About how this stuff works and kind of an understanding. And we were also, um, it, it's, we've been, it's been hinted at that we take, you know, we figure out other kinds of solutions that might be um, meetable to the government where they would effectively have a backdoor and be able to, to access new information. You're saying people accuse us of creating a backdoor for the government? No, no, no. The government has requested that oh. that be included. Um, <laughs> that's come up multiple times. I, at I would qualify department. that by saying a few specific, like two or however many specific actors within the government have dropped that hint, right? Yes, but in an official capacity. Um, this is interesting. Yeah, okay. so, so, so this is partners. Yeah. And, the part government yeah, have a, yeah. you dropped that hint. But it's like a non starter for like to, to your you know, you're talking about Paul's work um, you know, on the hill and with, with folks working on policy. Like it's a non starter for a huge chunk of um, you know, of our, our political folks in, in DC who are working on policies who want access to things like uh, you know, a digital cash. They want access to they, they don't, and they kick against anything that would allow themselves or regulators of the U.S., this country that we love, to, to have that, that kind of access. So it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a, a one-dimensional, this is what the government thinks. It's a very nuanced kind of conversation. Yeah, so what you're saying um, is there are other, can I clarify, because I I'm just to make sure yeah. I understand what you're saying, Josh? You're saying there's other actors like um, senators or congressmen or other departments or someone who have basically have opposite strategy or opposite values or opposite desired policy here. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Or did I totally misunderstand again? Nope. That's totally what I'm saying. But that reminds so. me of something that I don't know if Fidelic probably doesn't know this story. Um, a zillion years ago, <laughs> you had to get a bit license if you wanted your any New York exchanges or exchanges that had New York customers or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so we flew to New York 
several times and gave like lectures and tutorials to the New York Department of Financial Services because they're the people who add coins to the bit license whitelist. And we explained all about like cryptography and crypt encryption and all this stuff, right? And then they called us back for another meeting and we were a little confused because we had there were no further questions. Like we'd already explained everything. So we were like, why are we going back? Okay, let's go back. So we all flew to New York again. And this time they had like the whole department lined up on their side of the giant long table. And to open the meeting, the um, the head of the department gestured to his colleagues and said, we all agree that we don't want the pocketbooks of our friends and families being exposed to everyone on the internet. And I was like, oh, that's why they called us back to say that they they've decided that they too value consumer protection and the protection of society. Um, and that's why they're approving Zcash to be one of their whitelisted coins. So the point of the story is, I, I think there's a few mistakes that's easy to make, especially because of the intense, like the, the heartbreak and the uh, high stakes for the Tornado Cash developers and for you and my friend Virgil and so forth. Um, I think there's some easy mistakes to make that just like I think regulators are uh, easily confused by all the things they don't know and easily played by someone who tells them, I'll sell you a, I'll sell you a new technology that does everything you want. I, see, I think likewise, we cryptocurrency people are easily sort of um, overgeneralized by all the things we don't know and say, oh, the government is definitely going to ban privacy because it can't tolerate privacy. When in fact, that's, that's a very complicated, nuanced thing in my experience. All right, all right, all right. We could cut it there. Yeah, uh, that's, that's I recommend good. listening to the whole, the whole. Obviously, I, this is like you know, I, I love this. This is a great. It's comment. really engaging. Like it really, yeah. it's very I interesting. Mean, you know, Vitalik and mm -hmm. uh, Zuko. These these guys are, are 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 big brains from the crew. You know, like them or not, for whatever. I mean, they're they're amazing. What they've done for the space is amazing. Yes. And uh, Zuko is he's an interesting character, man. I mean, he lo <laughs> he's super super old school crypto. From the very, I think he was like the one of the right, wasn't he the one of the first guys interacting uh, with with Satoshi? He was he was among one one of the oh, first. Wow. Um, and so you know, much respect to him. It's 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 fun to to watch what he has to say here and talk talk about the history. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they were Zcash was approaching you know these exchanges and and the and the regulators, and that's how they were getting listed in New York. Interest, interesting, which makes makes complete sense. Uh, but I don't know. What do you guys think, Alaska Ana, man? What What do you think? You have any opinions here? What's What's your What is your take on Zcash? I don't know if I ever heard your your Zcash take. I think one of the funniest things about what was just said <clears throat> is uh, the people at the table are saying, "Yeah, we don't want our data out on the internet." But these are the same people that believe that they are entitled to a back door. They're they're entitled to look into these, and uh, there's there's a saying about um, the the most terrifying tyrant is the one that believes he's tyrannizing you for your own good, right? Well, I have to have this power so I can protect you, but you should definitely not have this power. This like holier than thou mindset um but then you look over here on the left at vitalik and he's kind of floating the same idea like well we'll make lists of you know compromised stuff and we'll just keep them out of the pool but you can still have privacy and my coins will still be anonymous but we just have to keep those guys out it's the same idea right and then the irony of somebody who has shielded and unshielded transactions also trying to make the same case, but in a different way, right? Where it's like, well, some transactions don't need to be private, but other ones do. So it's just three layers of the same absolutely ridiculous posi position, only they're like, a little more quiet about the fact that they're yes. tyrants, right? <laughs> great, great assessment. Yeah, I think that, that's why that's why I'm struggling with it, right? There's there's hypocrisy there. When Vita Vitalik had asked 
at Ask Duco, like, what well, you know, are you worried about Zcash? Are they going to try to, you know, try to ban Zcash? And he always, it kind of came up multiple times. He'd always go back to this point. Well, actually, uh, it, it's been shown that that no bad people are using Zcash. He kind of always yeah. go back to that point. Like, but you know, no, nobody. We, we've done studies or whatever, and no. Nobody bad is using Zcash. The thing with Tornado Cash is it was uh, they were using it was hackers that were trying to to wash the theorem. He's like nobody. It's it's different because there's nobody. He kept suggesting that it's like nobody bad is using Zcash, which is not a good answer to that to that <laughs> question. I mean, inevitably, bad people are going to use your technology if it's permissionless. Uh, and you need you need a better answer than that. You can't be Mister, you know, privacy for all and um, innocent until proven guilty. Yet, like, unwilling to realize that bad people are going to use use your tech because you you just otherwise you just find yourself bending the knee to regulators. So it's like he's trying to be this guy that's not bending the knee to regulators when his actions speak otherwise i feel like that's a very good point for both of you and uh it's like with cash we have rapists we have you know people that use cash dollars you know you, you can't not have them use that form of money you're gonna have criminals terrorists rapists and so on use that form of money you can't just have a, a clean z cash only benevolent people are using it that's not that's not a good answer like in monero yeah we have a lot of people that use it for good stuff uh but then we also have people that use it for terrorist acts and so on. Of course, we don't want that, but it's going to happen. Yep, yep. Uh, body, all on the dime of their user base and that 20% dev tax, which is which is an important point. I mean, I think that that is a weakness for the Zcash project. Well, um, if you put this into the context of that guy who is talking about the government's coming with their CBDCs and we want private anonymous digital cash, mm. and this is a guy who's collecting his dev tax talking about how we need privacy, and, then, and like the, the government collects their dev tax, right? Like, we allow you to exist freely, so you owe us money. And then there's this guy over here talking about, oh, bad people aren't using my stuff and, you know, collecting his 20 percent dev tax and offering the choice of privacy. It's it's all the same charade. It's just like a different way of doing it. Like they're, they're all doing the same thing, though, where like there already exists freedom for everyone. But everybody has like their one group that they eat, that they don't like and their one group that they like. And they're just trying so hard to find a way to exclude these guys and include these guys. And right. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the dev tax, in my opinion, is going to be an issue uh, given what we saw with Tornado Cash, right? Because it becomes proof that there's this centralized component to Zcash and there's this group of individuals that benefit from the use of Zcash, which was one of the underlying issues in the, in the Tornado Cash case, right? Is that these people were profiting from this tool that people were using in nefarious ways um monero i believe has done a better job at making the tool just a pure open source tool where there is no distinct group that is benefiting from the usage of it there is no mm -hmm. corporation behind monero all mm -hmm. right but regardless uh, of whether you agree with vitalake and zalka or you don't uh, because of these two now people think about privacy at least because there's i think there's three levels one people didn't think about privacy then they discover maybe these two talk about privacy and then they look into it and then they might think oh this is not really the privacy that i want it doesn't make sense and then they go into the third level which is the monero type of privacy so even if we have a step in the middle i think it's still appreciated that they talk about privacy and they lead people in the right direction eventually so Yep. Yep. Yeah. All, all good stuff for the movement in general. My question stuff. is, is how is he doing these studies where he was verifying that no bad guys were using his currency and then touting the, yeah. I think there, there, was a, there was a Rand report done, I think at one point that was, that has been referenced. 
uh that that group brand is always involved in the like the sketch the sketchy yeah shit. like the but, same people behind the rand contra are now yeah. going <laughs> i don't know it's like the cia funded rand like i don't know rand rand corporation they, they always do these these studies for the government uh but yeah it's it's just a horrible thing to lean on be like well it's actually not used for for crime that much um yeah the that, world's that, largest right. criminal organization that moves the most cocaine worldwide has told us that we are totally a legitimate organization not guilty but, of any kind yeah. of crime yeah people don't you when people want to do bad stuff they don't use eCash. when they want privacy they use eCash. But never, if they want to do anything bad, will they use it? <laughs> if it costs your life, I mean, you don't want to risk, so you might as well use Monero. It's just especially yeah. when it comes to privacy. Um, let's talk about Lightning Network. Um, so, Seth, Seth for privacy, obviously, he's very, very well versed in IT, uh, Bitcoin, Lightning Network, uh, Monero, of course. So he talks about. He said, not going to lie, most of the time using Lightning is I just absolutely hate it. And this comes from a person that is very, very well versed in IT. And then this is supposed to be a technology that is used by your grandma, your, your grandpa. Yeah, and Seth has really tried to give it a fair shot. You know, uh, I think a lot of us in the Monero land are just like, screw you, uh, Lightning, for various reasons. But Seth has really tried to, with an open mind, yes, uh, see the good in the lightning network and it seems like he's concluding that it's not all it's cracked up to be and it's very important because so he likes monero but it's very important that he also battle tested bitcoin and all its tools because it's very important not to remain focused on okay monero is the best and i don't care about anything else it's good to venture out and say test out zcash test out bitcoin lightning network like be open-minded and then that's when you truly show that you care about privacy and not the name Monero, because ultimately we care about what Monero does and not the name Monero. So he talked about Light Network. He just wanted to send $175 and he said it's literally impossible because of routing failures. And he talked about the process. Then he mentioned um, Phoenix and he said that this tool has been better for him. But so they this tool, Phoenix, they do all the routing for you, but you gave up 100 percent of your privacy. So do you want them to handle everything and then you lose your privacy or so? I didn't even know that on the Phoenix wallet. Like, wait, what, what's the deal with the really? Yeah, he said, yeah, you know why? Because they do all the routing and thus you give up 100% of your privacy to Phoenix. And he said, that oh. off isn't worth it for me. And <laughs> like, it's not worth it. Oh, they're saying later <laughs> versions will eventually be private. Okay. Yeah, the, the one time I used Lightning, it was, I was, I used Phoenix because that was Peter oh, really? Tim. Peter Todd wanted me to pay him, and he recommended I use Phoenix. And I've talked about this numerous times. It ended up being a real pain in the ass. And I had to pay like $8 in transaction fees or whatever it was, five five bucks in, in Bitcoin just to send my Bitcoin to the Lightning Network. And then the Lightning transaction itself ended up costing as much as a Monero transaction. It wasn't like it was, you know? It, and and the, the worst part was he had sent me an address to send to an invoice they called in lightning and then the invoice expired when i went to send mm. but i finally was ready to send and I had to resend the it was a horrible user experience such a hassle i think the no, most of... Phoenix, which is supposed to be like the uh, theoretically the easiest way yeah plus you're losing your privacy as you do it. i wonder how long those uh transactions those lightning uh invoices take to expire because uh, you could have used Trocador because they support Bitcoin Lightning where you can just send Monero to Trocador and then they'll send Lightning to whoever you want. I should have. I should have, obviously. Lesson, lesson learned. I was, you know, trying to go along with Peter Todd and he, he wanted to teach me how great Lightning was. So <laughs> I, I went through the exercise, right? Like the, You tried. <laughs> yeah, if, if anything, it probably taught you how not, uh, like why not to use Lightning. <laughs> Right, exactly. You know, but you, you got to give these things the benefit of the doubt, like Tony's saying, which is why Seth is so respected among uh, a lot, a lot of a lot of the crypto community, not just Monero people, because he does approach things with an open mind, and he has the ability to actually analyze this stuff. And it's interesting to see, despite all that, he's realizing that Lightning really isn't working out. 
There's a, a privacy podcast called the Watchman Privacy Podcast. I think it's, and Seth was on it. I think he was on it twice. And there was one podcast about how to be private with Bitcoin, and then one pro- podcast on how to be private with Monero. Uh-huh. And you had to have the most like ludicrous tech savvy brain to follow the bitcoin privacy guide stuff and you know i've been doing this for a decade and i still there was all kinds of stuff that was just making my head spin and then he gets into the monero one it's like oh yeah you just kind of use it and it just works (laughs) and then then like the whole the whole podcast was about like the philosophy of why freedom money is so great or whatever and it's like that by itself like it it just trying to use bitcoin privately derails the entire underlying philosophy like the entire initiative behind why i was attracted to bitcoin in the first place is undermined by the fact that it is like impossible to use with regular people yeah i feel like um light network is good if you're an arch linux user for the people that know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but if we really wanted to use it like as a form of money for everybody, like your grandma, your grand grandma, whatever, it should be something like Monero because it's so simple. You just press, you just type in the address in cake, in cake wallet. You can even put emojis and you can I send pay it my to... three-year-old in Monero and he knows how to yeah. use it. If a, <laughs> yeah. if a lightning transaction is like using arch, then Monero is like using windows. It's just that much easier. Yeah, I think, you, I think you said Linux Mint wrong. It's not Windows, it's Linux Mint. Oh, okay, or Ubuntu. Yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm, I am running, I'm running Manjaro, but it's such a pain in the ass, by the way. Um, so yeah, it's complicated. Monero is just, it's just simple. I mean, if you can just, you can literally set up for your grandma the emoji in Cake Wallet, uh, Christmas tree, the boss emoji, and you send money, and that's it. <laughs> Or you can just copy paste the address and send the money. It's really easy. Um, but the last thing that uh, we're gonna mention for this week's episode is, and th- this really pisses me off when, whenever it comes to this topic. It's really like, the population and all that stuff. Uh, Dr. Mike uh, Yedon, a former vice president at Pfizer, on how digital ID in conjunction with CBDCs could be used to depopulate the planet with plausible deniability. Something some people think that the uh, planet is overpopulated something it's underpopulated we're not gonna discuss this of course it's a really uh, long topic but uh, when i saw the design of the vaccines uh, this is in quotation marks i knew they were going to injure and kill people so these are people who don't mind bumping off a few million a few tens of millions and part of these millions of or a few tens of millions could have been uh, your friend's family and i lost family my friends lost some family members like mom and dad from it so it's really not nice uh, and the oncoming digital ID and the necessity to have it all for have it for all purposes and the cashless CBDC. If there was someone who was a bad intent running that, they can make you do anything, like going to get an injection that you don't need that might be poisonous, which is what I think they'll probably do. A condition of continued validity, in which you require to get money or enter shops, buy an air ticket, uh, or even get, uh, get on a train, is dependent on. Uh, you staying up to date, and I think most people will just keep getting the jabs and hoping it will get them this time. This is what the video talks about, and it's true. Like for example, in Romania, if you wanted to go to the mall, you had to prove that you took the vaccine, and now nobody asks you anything. Even in coffee shops or libraries, if you wanted to go, or even like your job, and now that people took the vaccine, not all of them. I think Romania is pretty low when it comes to vaccine vaccination vaccination rate, and Bulgaria, I think too. Uh, but if you didn't have it, you couldn't go to a coffee shop. You couldn't go look for books and, you know, do whatever you want to do. And now nobody asks anything. Nothing. That's when you, you can that's when you go to empire and, uh, and buy one of those fake vaccine pass, uh, pass cards or whatever off of like the, the dark net. Not legal advice. Monero. Yeah. There are other means as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's. So, you know, one of the things about this, and I don't know if, to, uh, if you've thought about this, Tony, or whatever, but 
-hmm. a lot of people they say you know, when they're talking about cbdc's they're always talking about like ah oh, so the tax man can get his cut and the, the people need to realize like these are the people that print money they're not like hungry for your money it's yeah. about knowing what you do with your money so you can be algorithmically gleaned based on your thought crimes or based on how much raw milk you drank the other day or whatever it's about knowing how you spent what money you have in order to in order to create more uh effective profiles it has nothing to do with collecting taxes i think yeah a very good point and it's the truth i think what we need, what we need to do we need to take every single politician we're going to open them on a wall for them we're going to take them to an ayahuasca trip, make them do mushrooms, whatever. <laughs> so they have spiritual experience. I'd have and they'll basically get that experience. <laughs> they'll find their way to the good parts. <laughs> exactly. Come to Monerotopia, we'll hook you up with Monero. You can take some mushrooms, and uh, then you're going to be wide awake. I mean, you know, silver line, lining once again with all this is we're just seeing more and more of this out there on the internet beyond just, you know, conspiracy theory forums people are aware of the dangers of cbdc's we have politicians that are out there speaking out against them people are aware of the dangers of digital ids they're aware of the danger of combining them given what we saw with covid and the vaccine passports so there is this awareness that is growing and that's that is the silver lining here like yes it's bad that it appears we are moving in this direction but silver lining is we're out there. Every, people are out there talking about it. Uh, yeah, maybe they're getting censored in some ways, but the information is getting out there more than ever, right? We're not just relying on all tuning into TV controlled by big pharma. And it's like you, you watch the one news source. Uh, you know, Twitter's not perfect, but the information's getting out there. A lot of misinformation too. But we are seeing these things discuss, and it's seeping into the minds of of a lot of people. And that will bring them towards privacy tech and towards Monero. Straight up. Yes. Inevitable.